Hey, folks, when we go out each week for our grocery shopping, we get great comfort in knowing that our government regulatory agencies, especially the USDA and the FDA, are making sure that the manufacturers and packages of our foods are doing it according to best manufacturing practices, that they're following sanitation standards, and that the shelf life of the foods we buy is going to be exactly what we expect. But the question becomes, is that still the case when we shop on the international aisle? I have found several cases that might very possibly put that to serious question. Should we beware when we're shopping the international aisle? Join me in this little short video. Take a look and see what you think. Hey folks, this is Phil from Alabama Hot Sauce. That's alabamahotsauce.com on the web. I'm with you today to talk about the potential answer to a question of, should we beware when we shop for food on the international aisle? Now, we are fortunate in the United States that the FDA very heavily regulates food manufacturers. They specify what you can call food, how food is classified, what sort of ingredients you can use. They further dictate that every manufacturer have a manufacturing control plan that outlines the quality assurance and quality control characteristics that they check on our food as it's being made. In addition to that, they have very specific standards for how food is handled for personal sanitation of the workers in a factory how it's packaged, and how it's preserved for shelf life. The FDA further goes and defines for us exactly what the nutrients are in the packaged food. They tell us if we're at any danger of any allergens in the food. In short, they give us great regulatory assurance that the food we buy is going to be safe, edible, and good. Now, FDA regulations specify exactly the same type of controls that a U.S. importer must assure are in place for any manufacturer who manufactures outside of the United States. Now, in general, manufacturers outside of the United States are excellent quality food manufacturers. As a matter of fact, factories outside the United States tend to be more modern, they tend to be better staffed, there tends to be a tremendous amount of training, and we can generally feel safe with food manufactured and imported outside the United States into the United States. Now, that situation may not exactly be true in every single case, just like I'm sure it's not even here in the U.S., but I think the question deserves much more serious attention when we talk about food manufactured in third world countries. Now, for the next two or three minutes, I'm going to show you some video that was shot in outside the United States in a food manufacturer of packaged and shelf-stable food. This manufacturer is quite proud of this video. As a matter of fact, they have published it on every kind of network you can imagine for people to see. They have literally thousands and thousands of views on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. This is a very, very proud company. This is a food product that's available in almost all grocery stores in the U.S. It's available on all the online sites. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at actual manufacturing footage that comes from this factory. And you answer for yourself. Should you beware or should you question some things you buy on the international outlet or grocery store? Now, as we take a look at this video, you can see a snack food is being extruded from machinery in this factory. A 
uh, the, this is a, a big product. A lot of it is sold. As you can see, a lot of it's being manufactured. And I want you to pay attention to certain things like are the employees wearing gloves when they handle food? What's the general cleanliness in the factory? And you make a decision for yourself. Here they're extruding this snack food and it's going to move down this conveyor belt. It's going to go to a chopper. Uh, they're making a lot of it as you can see. And it's going through various pieces of machinery and this stuff is being formed and eventually it will be cooked. Now as it passes through the machinery, you see here they're chopping it up. They're going to put a coating of some sort on it. I've actually had this food and it's a sort of a salty snack food type thing like we would think of potato chips. Very, very popular all over the world. And here you have it uh, bringing it out, putting the chopped pieces onto a, looks like a tarp. And now we got workers here. Picking this tarp up, it's covered up in full. They're bringing it over and they're sitting it down in the packaging area. And what do we see? They put it on the floor. Now, I want you to pay attention. We have a gentleman here. Matter of fact, look, several people who are grabbing up these things with bare hands. They're putting them in a bag. They are barefooted on the floor and they're packing these bags with this snack food and you see they're setting them aside there's other other manufacturers this stuff is on a like i said a tarp it's sitting on the floor look around on the floor i mean you can see for yourself the company's quite proud of this they publish videos all over the united states they even run ads to encourage people to watch them making this food item and so there we go, they're lining them up. The bags sit there open, waiting for someone to come along, and they obviously have sealed the top of it. And there you go, they're displaying that food quite proudly. And here's a gentleman, he's putting date stamps on, on bags. That is required by the FDA, and they're following that rule. I'm sure he's putting expiration dates. And this is a company that clearly is bustling, and they're doing the best job they can do. And they're packing this stuff up. They then export it all over the world. So there we go. There's a food item bought on the international aisle. Now, what you have to decide as a consumer is whether you should, regardless of whether food's made in the U.S. or outside the U.S., whether you should investigate a little bit on companies you buy from. I saw things in this video, to be quite honest, that bother me. I expect many of you did. I think it's a very, very, very small portion of non-U.S. exporters. But the fact remains, without a little bit of research, we simply don't know. Folks, thank you for joining me for this little short video. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up to let YouTube know you like my content. And ring that bell so they'll notify you each and every time I publish a video. Once again, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.